Okay, so within this guide you'll be learning 12 key factors that will help you understand what you may or may not be doing. Just before we begin, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content. And without further ado, let's start the video. Goal training is essentially timing your attack perfectly so that your next attack can come out immediately after. This goal training mechanic, when used over and over again in a single combo, puts you in a rhythm which allows your combat deck to be distinctively faster than if you weren't goal chaining. It is to be noted that you should try and goal chain all your moves, but some of your moves can be punished when you fail the gold chain as they become significantly slower. For example, fast attacks aren't very punishing as they are fast and if you do mess up, it's not that noticeable. However, many slow attacks have a long recovery time, so it is very important to gold link those slow attacks or else you may get interrupted easily before the move ends. While attacking, there is a stamina bar on the bottom of your screen. The bar shows your attack's animation progress and has two arrows pointing at a specific spot in the animation. If you successfully press your next attack when the bar reaches in between the two arrows, then you successfully get a gold chain of those two attacks, thus creating the infamous gold chain. Fainting is basically faking an attack by cancelling your attack mid animation in order to bait your opponent to throw out a mistimed defensive ability or a dodge in the wrong direction. Once your opponent has made that mistake, you will be able to punish them. Fainting can be performed by attacking and blocking slightly after. You will know if you fainted if you see a black shadow performing your move. To faint effectively within a fight, you must find out what strings within your combat deck your opponent can predict. With this knowledge, you are able to mislead and punish them effectively. Fainting should not be used if not needed. It should only be used in order to mix up your strings and allow you to continue your combos. If you faint without a reason, your opponent can punish you with a full-fledged combo. Remember, if you faint you're still vulnerable to any attacks or shard power-ups, as you're not in a blocking stance nor are you attacking. Blocking is omnidirectional, which means you block attacks from every direction. But while blocking, stamina recovery is hindered. That means when you get hit while you're blocking, you lose stamina. However, if you're low on stamina and get hit with a guard break or your stamina depletes, you'll be brought into a paralyzed state where you're stunned for a short period of time. This allows your opponent to punish you with a couple of devastating hits. So make sure you only block when you need to, instead of holding it down waiting for your opponent to attack you. In addition, blocking can prevent all abilities from affecting you, with the exception of Shockwave pushing you back. Now to truly become a good or even great player, you have got to master one of the four styles. To master a style, you must be able to use your style's ability effectively, for example, pairing as Forsaken. You will need to be able to time your style's ability perfectly in order to counter your opponent's attack so that you can dish out a quick punish. Your style's ability is truly the most essential thing you can have as it allows you to avoid damage and serve free punishes as your opponent will be either slowed or stunned for a short period of time. Dodging is also a crucial factor of someone's ability to perform well in a fight as it's another tool to avoid attacks and punish mistakes swiftly. You are able to dodge in all directions, this allows for a lot of counterplay, especially for a class like Forsaken, because you have two abilities to counter your opponent's attacks. To dodge effectively, you must dodge away from your opponent's attacks, either west, southwest, east, southeast, or backwards. You can dodge almost every attack by dodging southwest or southeast, but in some cases you aren't able to reach your opponent to punish them, so keep that in mind. Stamina management will either make or break you with an Absolver. This is due to the fact that everything you do, whether you attack, block, dodge, sprint, or even use your class abilities, costs a certain amount of stamina. At all times, you should aim to have maximum stamina in order to perform moves to your maximum capability. For example, if you're low on stamina and you block, and your opponent uses the guard break move, you need to have enough stamina to dodge out the way or parry the guard break. Also keep in mind, when you're stringing together moves, make sure you keep enough stamina to be able to disengage with a back dodge. The idea of buffering is that when you parry or absorb an attack, you can cancel the animation of the defensive ability and input an attack immediately after. This is not an easy thing to do, as it requires predicting your opponent's moves and quick reflexes, but the benefits are immense. You can perform the buffer by using your defensive ability and right after it is successful, you begin to attack. This is commonly seen in the high skill cap players. 
Punishing your opponent for a mistake is essential for a fighting game like Absolver, as it allows you to dish quick damage to them while having the choice to either disengage or continue on with the combo. Punishing is essentially free damage and you should take every opportunity possible. If you don't punish, however, you are letting your opponent get away with mistakes that would otherwise hurt them. To punish someone, you can attack someone who has mistimed a defensive ability, dodged the wrong way, fainted at the wrong time, or continues to block when you aren't attacking them. The pressure within Absolver is the ability to have the upper hand and to be able to keep your opponent on their heels. If you're continually bombarding your opponent with strings of combos and guard breaks, they have no chance of winning if you use all the things I've said within this guide. The only real way to avoid being pressured is to use hyper armor attacks or use shockwave to disrupt their combo and get some distance. Remember, spacing is important, especially in a fighting game. If your opponent is too close to you, you are in trouble, as they can launch a sequence of attacks to either get rid of your stamina or drain your health bar. So on that note, always make sure you're in control of the fight with your spacing and positioning. Timing your attacks is very important, as it allows you to mix up the flow and rhythm of your deck so it isn't as predictable as if you were continuously gold chaining. If you're fighting in your gold chain and you stop gold chaining for one move, your opponent may mistime a defensive ability or dodge which allows you to punish them with continuing your combo to deal more damage. One of the main things in this game is the option to change your combat deck. If your opponent's combat deck has a lot of mix-ups and is unpredictable, it will be harder for you to be able to dodge, parry, or absorb their moves. But if their deck is predictable, you'll be able to use your defensive ability and punish them. Keep in mind, the faster you can read your opponent's deck, the easier the game becomes. And lastly, the shard abilities such as Shockwave and Heal are incredibly useful and can turn the game around completely. If you activate heal and get off a full combo on your opponent, you'll regain all your health instantly. Whilst if you're using the ability Shockwave, you can push back all the opponents around you, which resets the fight. Another powerful shot ability is Gravity. Gravity pretty much stuns your opponent for a brief period of time, allowing you to pull off a full combo on them. Alright, so that's the end of the guide. I really hope you like those 12 tips that may or may not help you with an absolver. Remember, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like. That tells me that you enjoyed it and you would like more. And once again, thank you for watching and goodbye.